Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey. So tell me, Muse, of that plant of many resources which wandered far and wide the ancient plant of food, fuel, fiber, cultivated for millennia. As we venture through the past 10,000 years, we will explore and discover the plant from which cannabis derives, the many uses of the plant, hemp, cannabis, ashes, cannabis in religion, cannabis in medicine, cannabis in dear old Uncle Sam. And so our odyssey begins. Today, our odyssey is not long ago and far away. In fact, it is current and in progress. So, we have invited my dear friend, and everybody knows I only invite dear friends, <laughs> my dear friend, Senator Mike Gabbard, who will talk today about hemp, the hemp industry, where we're going with this industry, and all of the wonderful benefits of the hemp industry and what it can do for Hawaii. So, aloha, Senator. Aloha, Marsha. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. This is such a pleasure. And it's, it's an auspicious date because actually June 5th through the 10th is Hemp History Week. Yes. So this is a very, very appropriate. Very, <laughs> good yes, timing. Good timing. <laughs> Who decided on Hemp History Week? Uh, it goes back uh, many years, but it's celebrated here. You know, Maui, they have a, a whole, the whole week-long celebration. I'm not sure what their activities are this week. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Hemp Week. Yeah. So let's talk about hemp. Okay. What, what is hemp? Well, it's a, uh, a lot of people have a misunderstanding mm -hmm. of what hemp is. It is a cousin of marijuana, of cannabis. But the difference is, is that the THC content for hemp is only three-tenths of 1% versus 10 to 30% for marijuana. So you cannot get high on hemp. And this is one of the things that I had to convince my colleagues of because of that for so many years, the stigma attached to industrial hemp is just the same thing as marijuana. But, and it's, it's interesting, Marsha, because the, the story, you talk about the odyssey, the local odyssey for hemp actually began in 1999 when the uh, legislature passed a bill that would allow a three-year study to grow hemp out in Wahiwa. It was uh, privately funded, no taxpayer dollars. I think it was $200,000. It was a hemp shampoo maker from the mainland that wanted to see how hemp grew in Hawaii. And so with the passage of that law in 1999, Hawaii became the first state to plant hemp since World War II. And during the World War II efforts, there was hundreds oh, of yeah. thousands of acres that were used the, 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 uh, for that purpose. But this was the first, Hawaii was the first state. And so the results of that three-year study was that the Chinese variety of seed was the best fit for Hawaii's climate, et cetera. And December 14th, 1999, Governor Cayetano proclaims Industrial Hemp Day Hawaii, 1999. And then as unfortunately the wheels of government tend to Yes. Go very slow <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> if you yeah. know what I mean. It's 1999, yes. we have the results of the study. 2014, a very dear friend of mine, John Rogers, who had cancer at the time, he said, Mike, why don't you look at uh, the possibility of, of our farmers here in Hawaii growing industrial hemp? So I said, yeah, okay, sure. We checked out a, a film, um, it was uh, Bringing It Home, is the name of the documentary, uh, by Linda Booker, and it was excellent because it told the history, it told all the, gave the facts about industrial hemp. So then in 2014, I introduced a bill Remember now, 1999, yeah. 15 years later. But you know, during that period from 1999 to 2014, there were actually 43 pieces of legislation that were introduced related to hemp. So in 2014, I introduced a bill that would allow our farm, actually, let me backtrack. It was actually President Obama in his farm bill of 2014 at the federal level, uh, entered, uh, added a clause saying farmers would be allowed to grow hemp if it was through the State Department of Agriculture, 
uh, and or through their university for research purposes, right? So that was the entree, so I said, okay, so why don't we do a local level bill and allow our farmers to do it? So I thought, oh, this is gonna be a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so the bill gets introduced, I wasn't on any of the committees, and lo and behold, the final result of the bill was they turned it into a two-year study. <laughs> Another study. Another study. And I'm thinking, oh, Does anybody ever read studies? <laughs> I know, right? So I'm thinking, oh, we had the three-year study in 1999. Do we really? Anyway, so in the course of the hearings at the bill, actually, it was interesting, Marsha, because uh, HPD, officer from HPD, came in to, and to, to, to testify. And his testimony was, well, look, actually, in a, in a private conversation, he said, look, you know, our dilemma is this. We pull somebody over for speeding and we're giving writing the ticket, and lo and behold, we look on the side next to the driver and there's a baggie. Now, Senator, how can we tell whether that's hemp or marijuana? And I remember looking at the officer and saying, uh, officer, the likelihood of somebody having a baggie of industrial hemp, which you cannot get high on because the THC content is three-tenths of one percent, the likelihood of, have, of somebody having that on their seat next to them driving is slim to none. And the officer said, hmm, I see your point. <laughs> so it was yeah, actually... Look at, this, look at this. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, can have yeah. this and on I'll the get, seat of the car. Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it got turned into a two-year study. So uh, Professor Harry Ako from UH was in charge of the study. So he orders the seed to grow. Eleven months later, he was able to get the seed because the DEA, the Drug Enforcement right. Agency, the federal, they got the seed, and they did Dear not Uncle want Sam. to release it. Right. 11 months. So finally, in April of 2015, we have the Kahu comes, there's a blessing out at the Waimanalo site for UH, plant the seed, it's wonderful, here we go. And then about 16 weeks later, almost to the day, heard from uh, uh, Dr. Ako uh, to come out for the harvest. And I remember thinking, Harvest 16, I looked at my calendar and I said, wow, I mean, how tall can the plants be? So I drive out there, I got out there a little early and, and as I'm parking my car, I look, there's this figure and he's kind of against the backdrop of this, this yes, plant. This plant, yeah. One of the can plants. Can see the plant? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> that's a stalk from actually stalk. from the study. Marsha, yeah. the shortest plant was 10 feet tall. This is. Most of the plants were 10 this, Most, is, this is almost eight yeah, feet, yeah, I would yeah, guess. Yeah, eight to nine feet tall. Most of the plants were 12 to 16 feet tall. And, and there's Dr. Arco, and he's kind of almost dancing. And you look at our background. Yeah, right, it's beautiful. <laughs> and he's saying, I said, Harry, uh, you were kind of a skeptic at the beginning. He said, what, what's your thoughts now? And he said, we've got to do this in Hawaii. He said, Senator, look at this. And the punchline was this, Marsha. From seed to this in 16 weeks, and all we used was water. Mm -hmm. no, fertilizer, no fertilizer, no pesticide, no, no herbicide, just water. And so uh, Professor Ako had to submit his study to the legislature for the 2016 legislature, and I'll quote him right here. He says, hemp seed production may become a lucrative activity for farmers. There is significant potential for a successful hemp ag industry in Hawaii based on the preliminary findings of the 2015 Industrial Hemp Research Project. And so given that, 2016, I introduced another bill, the second bill, and this one would set up the five-year pilot program. It passes, and then also during 2016, we find that there's a, uh, a uh, coach, a uh, former NB coach, Don Nelson, who lives at Sugar Beach, Maui. He's built his guest house, his Aloha guest house, 850 square feet, out of hempcrete. Yes. Not concrete, Cre hempcrete. hempcrete. Using yes. the stalks yes. of the hemp plant with lye and water. And so they invite me to come over. I'm walking through this thing, I'm going, this is incredible. And not only that, he's gonna build his 4,500 square foot home in back of the guest home out of hempcrete. So mm -hmm. they had this big dinner and and I make a presentation from the Senate, and then they had a surprise presentation for me, a little award, a little plaque, and I was <clears throat> voted the 2016 Hempster of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> I have hamster. that plaque in my office at the Capitol prominently displayed. A hamster. A hamster. I'm the a, hamster I, I of the year for 2016. And so it passes, it sets up the, 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 um, 
the pilot program. And then in 2017, I introduced the third bill. And this would basically just kind of fine tuning, uh, makes it so that the counties cannot uh, ban, cannot override the state. There were some other things that farmers could apply year round. That was in 2017. And then in 2018, I introduced uh, the fourth bill related to hemp. And basically that sets up a special fund so that the fees that the farmers pay to get their uh, their uh, license fees or if there's any fines, or any, it would go into this fund, which would help self-fund the hemp program, the hemp pilot program. So the four bills that passed, and as I mentioned, altogether, 1999 to 2018, 47 pieces of legislation to get to where we are today. <laughs> so that is the Hemp Odyssey Hawaii well, in a that nutshell. Is, that is it, yes. <laughs> now, we have talked to um, farmers on the Big Island mm -hmm. who are working with the Department of Agriculture to um, create a plant, a seed mm -hmm. that is endemic right. to Hawaii. Right. And needless to say, they, they're very excited yes. about the possibilities. So, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about all of these wonderful products Great. that you brought us okay. made of hemp. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Thank you. We'll be Yeah. People I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Marcia, and we are back with my dear friend, Senator Mike Gabbard, and we are talking about hemp. And the senator brought lots of things with him. Let's start over here. Can we see yeah. the briefcase? Oh. Here's a hemp briefcase that my staffer uh, gave to me. Uh, and, and this that's is- That's made out of all of- Made out of hemp. hemp. Yeah. Here's a hemp uh, shirt. What is this? Does it feel, it looks like plastic. Yeah, it does. I'm not sure of all the other ingredients besides hemp. It but feels Obviously great. from stocks, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then uh, at least our count shows over 25,000 different products made. Here's a hemp shirt made out of hemp, and the Aloha shirt that I have on is also made out of hemp. Yeah, that's beautiful. Right. And then we've got different products here. Uh, this is with hemp and chia. Here's hemp seeds, toasted hemp seeds, hemp milk, and hemp protein smoothie. And here's one actually from a company on the main, uh, excuse me, on the Big Island, Mana Artisan Botanics. It's a CBD tincture. And what they're doing is they're making these pure hemp extracts using Hawaiian herbs. Oh. And so they're already on the cutting edge of this thing. And so the whole idea, of course, that I've had, the vision that I've had from the very beginning was to Hawaii branding. Yes, right? absolutely. With the Hawaiian hemp and shampoo, shampoo Hawaiian, Hawaiian hemp granola, yes. Hawaiian hemp smoothies. And this one, the hemp milk. Yes. Delicious. It is, and you can buy it now. I, this is not an ad, but I can right. tell you, you can buy it at the uh, market on University King Street, where King and University down to Earth, not down to Earth, the other one. Oh, Kokua. Kokua. Okay, yeah, Kukua. down to Earth has them. Whole Foods has them. I'm pretty sure yeah. all of them have okay. them. Yeah, they have. I don't know. This is not this brand, but they yeah. have a hemp. Milk. But I, yeah, but I wanted to mention this, Marsha, because a lot of people don't realize this, but. Uh, last year, 2017, the Hemp Industries Association, they, they did a, an estimate, $688 million 
in retail sales of products like this. And here's the punchline. Most of that money went to China mm -hmm. and to Canada because it is against the law in the United States to grow because of... Um, Jeff Sessions. It's on the control... <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to get political here, but it's on the controlled substance. It's been right. on the controlled substance list since 1970. We have... Uh, and therefore, that's why... Uh, we, but we, we have... Uh, Dr. Otto. You know Dr. Otto? Yes, Dr. Cliff Otto. He has worked tirelessly yes. to change that. Yes. Yes. And our legis uh, I have to put in a plug because our Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, she yeah, has been course. working. And let me just give you a quick update because uh, for your viewers, uh, it's, stop it's Rep. James Comer, a Republican from Kentucky, uh, H.R. 5, R. 85, that's the bill in the House, has six co-sponsors, which includes Tulsi. And then on the Senate side, Mitch McConnell, also a Republican from Kentucky, he's got 27 co-sponsors, which include our senators, Hirono and Schatz, on those bills. So that basically what both bills would do is that it would remove industrial hemp from the controlled substance, substance list. Yes. And see, it's just, when you think about it, controlled substance, heroin, LSD, marijuana, and all of its derivatives, including yes. hemp, even though you can't get high on hemp. Right? I know. So, so anyway, so at least at the federal level, if and when that happens, and hopefully it's going to be sooner than later, mm -hmm. then that's going to solve all our problems. Our farmers yes. will be able to just start growing hemp. Like yes, that. and also in the Congress, there is a cannabis caucus mm -hmm. ah. in, the, in the House, yeah. a cannabis yeah. caucus. Now, just a little, this is not off the subject. Yeah. Your fellow legislators, mm -hmm. Some of them are scared because of Jeff Sessions mm -hmm. and his threats. What can we do? How can we, and I don't mind doing whatever you say, to educate them about what we're talking, why, so there is no fear, to get rid of the fear? Yeah. How, how do we do that? You know, Marsha, I think, um, and, and we have to make the distinction between hemp and right. marijuana, right? So as far as hemp, uh, they're all on board. When they finally learned, learned. when yes. they were educated as to what this is, it, what it is, and what it can do for our, our economy, economy, for well, our that's farmers. That's what we're talking about. Now, in terms of, uh, and then of course we have medical marijuana. We do. And then they're, you know, the dispensaries are having their issues. And then if you start moving into legalizing marijuana, no, I'm, then not, that's I'm a, not going there. Okay, you're not I'm going. Not, okay, I'm, I wasn't sure. I'm, so no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. I'm just talking about what we have. Yeah. Because. The Supreme Court says that Jeff Sessions can't mess with medical cannabis. Right, right. But yet we have people that are afraid. Yeah, that's right. So and how I, do we how do we deal with that? I think that just uh, you know education, where uh, at, at town hall meetings, at, at legislators communicating with their constituents, at any opportunity, perhaps through TV, through social media, so that people understand. And that's been the biggest problem. It is. Is people just they're confused. I remember constituents in my district, they said, oh, Senator, oh, you want to legalize marijuana? I said, no, no. I want to legalize the growing of industrial hemp. Yeah. It's a separate issue. Yes, I We can talk about that at a different time. Let's talk about this. And then when they found out about it, the 25,000 different products with the Hawaii branding, you know, the guy strumming his ukulele and the girl doing the hula on the label and how wonderful this is, when, you they know, go, oh, oh, wow, that's great. Let's do this. Yeah, the, the, the mayor of Kauai, sitting right where you were, and we're talking about the possibilities of farming and what have you, and you, you could see this look in his face, and I had to assure him that we're not talking about adult <laughs> pleasures here. <laughs> right. We are talking a farming industry, yeah. and his whole demeanor changed. That's yes. it. See, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So when people get educated, especially policymakers, when they understand what we're talking about right. here and, that, and how great this is going to be for the Hawaii economy, and I have to tell you a quick story because I was at the National Hemp Conference last year, and so we're talking story with some my counterparts from all over the country, and I... They've got like 12,000 acres of hemp growing right now in Kentucky because tobacco farmers, you know. It's gone. Fewer people are smoking, therefore right. there goes their livelihood. So they're looking at industrial hemp as a replacement crop. But I was talking to him and I said, look, dude, you got no chance. When Hawaii starts, when they have the Hawaii hemp shampoo, Hawaii hemp granola, et cetera, et cetera, 
who's going to buy Hawaii? I mean, who's going to buy Kentucky hemp shampoo right. when they can get the, you know? And I said, and by the way, nine million tourists come to Hawaii, and each one of them, they want to take home a little bit of Hawaii when they leave, you know? And then I looked at one of the other ones, and I said, oh, no, well, the, another cool thing I wanted to bring up was, uh, in Hawaii, we have three harvests a year. Uh, Colorado, how many do you have? And the guy's like this, and he goes, <laughs> yeah, right. So, I mean, Marsha, this, this is... This year-round sunshine, I yeah. I know, It's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, but that's what we were talking about, the fact that this, this, this is, of course, uh, what, what the senator bought me from. Which, where did this one This come was from? the first, uh, the first. 2015 study. First study. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then after 16 weeks, and we harvested it in July of 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just. I got a few stairs, by the way, when I was walking down I'm to the sure studio. You're, <laughs> you're going fishing. Yes. That's right. <laughs> right. Fishing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, that would be good for fishing. Yeah. Yeah, because whatever. it wouldn't pollute. Oh, whatever. Yeah. So many uses. Yeah. So many it's uses. It's just up to. Yes. And then here's another thing. And actually, uh, there is a Maui Hemp Research Institute. And they've been doing work on, okay, so the farmers plant all this hemp, they start to grow, so what do we do with it, right? How right. can we start, what's the processing? And that all is being worked out as we speak. But I remember uh, uh, last year, a year before, we had an inf inf informational briefing at the Capitol, and, and Steve Rose from the Maui Research Hemp, and he came up to me and he looked at me and he says, Senator, toilet paper. Yes. I looked at him, I went, toilet paper, what are you talking about? Toilet? He, said, he said, toilet paper. We import 100% of our toilet paper. They are making hemp toilet paper in China right now as we speak. And, and <laughs> since you brought up toilet paper, it takes 27,000 trees to supply the United States with toilet paper each week. Wow. There you go. There you go. Yes. And we have, ten, as the chair of the Agriculture Committee in the Senate, we have, of course, I'm... I'm my primary interest right now is is helping grow more of our local food since we're importing 90% yes. of our food, right? But there are still thousands of acres that we need to be looking into. It It may not pencil out, but the fact is we should be looking at well, whether it's toilet paper or any of these other products as what's going to work here in Hawaii for and, our folks. And as I told you, a friend of mine is really interested in fuel for 3D printers. Yep. Now when we figured out there was 20, 30,000 products made, nobody talked about 3D printers. That's right. That's right. That's right. And she is convinced yeah. that that's and um, there's so many people with so many ideas and in the um, application online for mm -hmm. the Department of Agriculture it asks you now if you're so you have to have 10 acres can't go over 10 acres 10, ten acres you got to have and annual license annual license fee is 250 dollars yeah. okay and it says what is your end product there you go you have to say what it is okay i'm going to grow this now what mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and for me it's the now what yeah yeah and what are we going to do? Yeah. Okay, I've got this beautiful crop, and I'm going to harvest it. Then what? Where do I send it? Who do I give it to? What are they right. going to do with exactly. it? Exactly. Right. And those are the questions I think we need to, that's where we need to deal. It's right. the what if. That's what, right. What, what, what now? That's right. And that's, you know, when I was given this uh, a while ago, I was told that these, they're like $35 for like an ounce and a half. And this is very, I mean, epileptics are using this, all different types of medicinal purposes, alcoholics are using, all different types of uh, wonderful thing. So this is, it is going to make a lot of money for. Yep. So, so I guess the question is, if I grow this, I don't have 10 acres, but if I had, what, what would be the next step? What do I, who picks up this harvest? Where does the harvest grow? Do right. we have machinery right. Right. to trans to turn it into right. the, the oils? Right. 
where where is that? That is of, that's what's being worked out right now. Okay, that's yeah. the piece that yeah. needs to be addressed. Yes, exactly. It's a it's a five year pilot program, and those kinds of questions. That's what's being looked at right now. And so, you know, another use that uh, came up at the legislature: polystyrene that's, takeout that's containers, right? Yes, that's so there's horrible. it's being made locally, mm -hmm. and so there's been a bill to introduce to ban it. Right. But it means a hundred people are going to lose their jobs. Their jobs. I am sure that. This hemp can be, be used, used exactly absolutely. instead of the polystyrene instead right. of the styrene. So, and I have a friend who makes a suntan lotion mm -hmm. without the oxybenzone the, and oxybenzone. Yes, she uses the the mineral CBD. based. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. And it is, um, you know, she sells it at, at the swap meet. Yeah. Yeah. And swells it. Oh, so many people buy. Yeah. Because it doesn't. It's great for the skin, and it doesn't kill the, the coral. And you know, if we kill the coral, we kill tourism. That's right. And when you think of all the things that can be done. Right. So. I just wanted to add uh, the uh, Hawaii Farmers Union. They did a survey a year or two ago, and over 100 farmers said that they are ready and ready willing to, to put to hemp this. seed into the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it, now it's just a question of, I think there's only been eight applicants so far, and one has been issued a license, because the licenses are just being issued this month in June. Right. But I think that people are kind of waiting, they're a little cautious, because they don't want to jump on the hemp bandwagon until the, you know, the wrinkles are ironed out, and we're, we're totally sure it's, it's a 100% go. So, yeah, exciting well, stuff. It is. So, I and for me, it's that, okay, now what? How do I, once right. I harvest this, right. That's right. then what's the next step? That's right. So I think that's what we need to talk about. So uh, you will come back. I will. And talk about the next step. Yep. How do we go I'll from here to there? Yep, sounds good. Great. Thank you so much for coming. This is a real pleasure, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Marcia. Aloha. Aloha.